Hi, it's Miss Magda from the Bordeaux Branch Library. Back again with another spooky story. So, <clears throat> in 1912, the Tennessee Power Company built themselves a dam over in Polk County, right in the middle of the Cherokee National Forest. Actually, they wanted to build two dams. And they got done with the first project, started to build the second project, and realized they didn't have enough workers commuting in from Benton, a very far seven miles away, to work at these big projects. So they built themselves their own village called Caney Creek. It had everything that you'd ever want in a place to live. It had a one-room schoolhouse, it had a two-story hotel, it had trolley lines, concrete sidewalks, it was amazing. It even had tennis courts. So everybody who lived there um, either worked for the Tennessee Power Company or had a mama or daddy who did. But the thing is, this is the only town in America that has never ever had cars. Because after they built the first dam and started on the second one, that lake that got dammed up, it flooded over the road leading to the second project. So everybody had to park their cars off of I-64 and then walk across a 150 foot suspension bridge just to get home. That was fine. Most everything they needed was in the village. Now let's say there was a family called the Greens and their eldest daughter might have been named Maggie. I imagine Maggie was bright, beautiful, everything you'd ever lo love in a teenage girl. And she probably had many of those boys courting her. But it didn't matter because she had given her heart to a man who lived in Benton. John was a simple park ranger, but he traveled over every single Saturday night to see his Maggie. He'd park his car on I-64, travel up the trail, go across the suspension bridge, and who would he find on the other side? Maggie, holding a lantern to make sure that he would get across safely. Her mother and father weren't crazy about the match. To be honest, her father wished that she would find someone with uh, more money, better reputation, maybe somebody who worked for the power company, but they didn't care. They loved each other and they planned to get married no matter what their folks said. They set a date and luckily, they found an ally in John's preacher, who was honestly a hopeless romantic at heart. He agreed to marry them. So, on the given night of their elopement, here was the preacher heading over to the meeting spot, which was Bitten Falls. Now, Bitten Falls was not too far away from Acaney Creek. It is actually in the middle of a beautiful park now. If you ever want to go hiking, it's gorgeous. I'd highly recommend it. But that's where our preacher was, waiting under the canopy of beautiful night and stars and the holy water running through it. And John, like he did every Saturday night, drove his car and parked it next to I-64. And then would start walking the trail up to the suspension bridge. Maggie, for her part, was on the other side, waiting for him with her lantern and a suitcase that carried all of her worldly possessions. Because she knew by making this decision to get married to John, her folks may not want to ever see her again. So she was ready for that. All of a sudden, a great mist came up across the bridge, across the road, across all the water. You couldn't see anything. It really was pea soup. Put a hand in front of your face, nothing. I mean, 
people on the road could barely see a foot in front of them, even with their lights on. The preacher was down there next to the waterfall. All he could hear was the gurgling and gurgling. He couldn't see a single thing. John was having to watch very carefully, not only his own footsteps, but make sure that the branches weren't getting in his face. And Maggie, well, she held up her lantern a little bit higher just in case because she certainly couldn't see anything coming across the bridge. Well, she waited what seemed like hours for John to come and he didn't. So she got worried. She decided, okay, well, maybe I need to meet him halfway. So she picked up her suitcase in the other hand and started the, her way across the bridge. Now, she was correct about her family being upset about her running off, but it was more about her safety <laughs> rather than her elopement. They didn't honestly care that much about who she loved. So when they found her gone, they got a, a big search party together. They went to all of our friends' houses. They went up and down the street looking for her. They couldn't find her anywhere. And finally, they went to the bridge. And they did see someone on the bridge. They were, they were coming their direction. And when they finally made it across, it wasn't Maggie. It was John. They begged and pleaded for him to tell her, them where their daughter was, and he couldn't. He hadn't seen her at all. He had just made it across the bridge himself. But now he was worried. So he took one of their lanterns and he joined the search party. They went up and down. John went back across the bridge to look for Maggie. Now, it had been a few hours. One, two, that preacher that we left down by the waterfall, he's a bit worried now. And so, despite the mist, he made his way back up the trail, just hearing the water as it was going past him, as he made his way back up to the road. The mist finally lifted when the sun rose. And when everybody looked around, they still hadn't found Maggie, but they still hadn't found John either. He never came back from across the bridge. They did find his car, parked right where he left it, off of I-64. So, if you ever happen to go camping, maybe in a four or five mile distance around the abandoned now village of Caney Creek over in Polk County. You might see some lights flickering, especially near water. Don't be afraid. It's just Maggie and John trying to lead each other home. Happy haunting. It's Miss Magda from the Wardo Branch Library.